What if I told you there are two things that you can start doing right now that will save you hours in Photoshop, freeing you up to edit more photos in less time? And what if your image quality actually went up while you're at it? Well, just give me eight minutes and I'll give you back hours of your valuable editing time because in this video, I'm showing you exactly what these two speed and quality enhancing secrets are and how you can easily start using them the very next time you open Photoshop. So you can be creating images with more wow factor than ever and faster. To understand the first time-saving tip, let's quickly compare two incredibly successful fiction writers because love them or hate them, there's no denying that they've both had unimaginable success with their books, but they've used two very different approaches to get there. And let's be honest, one hasn't even really got there yet. George R. R. Martin, author of A Song and Ice and Fire, otherwise known as Game of Thrones by the time it hit TV, is known for his incredible plot and character and world building. He does this by letting his story grow organically and allowing plots and characters to evolve naturally as he writes, often discovering the story for himself along the way. He starts off with a vague idea of roughly where the story might go, but then he just lets the writing take him there. And writing this way, George R. R. Martin is often referred to as a gardener type of writer. But then on the flip side, you have the architect writer, someone who meticulously maps out the plot and storylines before ever writing a word. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling is an architect. She knows exactly where the story is going from the start, and that enables her to manage complex narratives with great efficiency. All right, that's great. So they're both wildly successful. What point am I trying to make here? Consider this. J.K. Rowling published all seven Harry Potter books between 1997 and 2007. That's an average of one book every one year and five months. Now let's look at A Song of Ice and Fire. First book, published in 1996. Second in 98, a two year gap, not bad. Third book in 2000, two years, still pretty good. Fourth book, 2005, that's a five year gap. Book five, 2011, that's a six year gap. And book six, well, <laughs> It's now 2024 and we're still waiting 13 years so far to write book six and fans still have no real idea when it's coming. So why has it taken so long for George to write book six? Many people put it down to the fact he's a gardener. The story became too complicated and got out of hand because he didn't know where it was going before he started. Contrasting that with architect JK Rowling who pumped out seven books in 10 years because she started with a structure and a plan. She mapped out exactly where the story was going before it got there. And so writing was just a matter of process. So let's bring this back around to your Photoshop editing. Are you a gardener or an architect? Do you open up an image in Photoshop, try some techniques to see what effect they might have, then roll them back and try something else to see what happens. And then you keep repeating that cycle until the image looks okay. And then when you edit another photo from the same shoot even, you can't get it looking quite the same as the last one because you don't remember exactly what it was that you did. If so, then you're a gardener and you're probably spending more time than you need to on every single photo. But if you want to work efficiently and in a way that gives your images consistency, then you should become an architect. And here's a simple three-step process that you can follow to do exactly that. Step one, make a note of all of the individual techniques that you use regularly in Photoshop and what they do. For example, curves adjustment layer, adjust brightness or contrast. Curves adjustment layer again, adjust color balance. Autumn effect, add glow and saturation, dodge and burn to enhance localized shadows and highlights. That's just a few to give you an idea and no doubt you have others. So just make a list of all of these techniques and what each one does, but not until you've watched this whole video because the second tip coming up in a minute is gonna change how you look at each of your edits and adjustments. First though, step two in this process is to group your list of techniques into a handful of higher level categories. For example, here are the six categories that I group my own editing techniques into. Image file preparation, so this includes anything in ACR or Lightroom for me. Create an even exposure, recover clipped shadows, highlights, exposure blending, they all go in there. Color adjustments, so this is where I correct and or tweak colors in the image. Contrast and drama, these are techniques that affect light and contrast, plus some others. Enhance and embellish, so this is anything that I consider a creative effect or adjustment. And the sixth category is resize, sharp and export, which kind of speaks for itself. And if you want to take a closer look at how I group everything into these six categories, then you can download my free six stage editing workflow guide from the link on my channel homepage. But for now, here's step three. So once you've created your structure with all of your techniques grouped together and mapped out in a logical order, simply follow that logical order for all of your editing. Sounds simple, right? You're still using the same techniques that you already know, but you're just doing them with a new level of consistency because you're making the same decisions and doing the same thing at the same stage of the process each time. And this is what's gonna massively reduce the amount of time that you lose to trial and error, 
with the gardener's approach because you know exactly where you're headed before you leave the station. Now the extremely valuable time saving and quality increasing tip that I want to share with you next is potentially going to affect any and all adjustments that you can make to a photo. It gives you the ability to reduce a complicated and complex technique down to just a few clicks. But first, let me show you how it actually improves your edits. When you make an adjustment, like brightening your photo with a curves adjustment layer, for example, more often than not, the adjustment looks best used in only one part of your image. If you want to make the dark areas of some rocks lighter, then it doesn't make sense to make the whole image lighter. What you'd normally do is use a layer mask to hide the adjustment, pressing Command or Control I on the keyboard to invert the mask first, and then you'd use a white brush to reveal the effect in the areas that you want it to be seen. But the problem with using a brush directly into the layer mask like this is that it's easy, but it's not accurate. The brush is always going to be going over the edges of what you want to affect and into parts that you don't. And unfortunately, using a smaller and smaller brush to try and get right up to those edges is just going to take forever. And plus, it still leaves heaps of room for error. And so this is where the complex technique of luminosity masking comes in. And that's what allows you to brush into only the parts of the image that are already dark, say meaning your brush can go over the edges without affecting the other side. Think of it like spray painting through a stencil. And so that's the quality side of this tip covered. Now comes the speed. Because the problem for you right now, unless you're incredibly adept at using luminosity masks, is that it's actually a very complex technique to learn, to remember once you've learned it, and then to use it. But here's the good news. I created a free plugin for Photoshop that you can download from the link in the description and pinned comment, which makes the whole process as easy as a few clicks. So let me show you what it can do. So the luminosity selections bar at the top here has a bunch of buttons labeled minus five to five. When you click on one of the minus end, the plugin loads the selection of the shadows. And when you click a positive number, the plugin loads a highlight selection. And the larger the number, the deeper into that tonal range the selection will be made. So minus one essentially selects the dark half of the image, whereas minus five selects only the very darkest parts, for example. And then finally clicking zero loads a mid-tone selection, which is basically everything except for the darkest and lightest parts. All right, so that's great. What can you actually do with these selections? Two things. First, you can load one before adding an adjustment layer. And when you do that, the adjustment layer's mask assumes the selection so that anything you do with that adjustment will affect only the tonal range selected. Or if you want to make it even faster, you can use these shortcut buttons here, which add curves adjustments that add contrast brighten and then darken the image. Or if you press one of these shadow midtone or highlights buttons next to them, it'll automatically add that curve to that tonal range. Now, the second way that you can use the luminosity selections is to make your adjustments first and then use a selection to mask that adjustment in or out of the image. So let's say that I add a contrast curve to this image. And then I decide it's too much in the dark shadows, so I want to mask it out from those dark shadows. What I'll do is click minus five, and then with the selection active, I'll brush with a black brush into the layer mask to hide the effect from these shadows. And I can happily brush quickly because the selection or stencil, if you will, is making sure that the brush only goes where I want it to go, saving untold amounts of time. Now there's a lot more that you can do with this plugin to save time while reaping the benefits of one of the most complex Photoshop techniques around including using it to quickly blend bracketed exposures for a natural HDR blend. So if you'd like to get started, then just click the link in the description or pinned comment to download it now. And oh yeah, it's free.